Welcome to Garden Valley Church Podcasts. We are so looking forward to having you join us today. Hi, I'm Brian Bandelman. This is my wife, Shelly. Say hi, Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Good job. Welcome back to our podcast. And this week we're gonna try to finish up what we started two times ago with um, weight, go, and casting lots. And we're in Acts chapter one, and we've come to kind of an interesting little interplay here where they're replacing Judas. And I find it interesting because we have to have 12. And we don't know exactly why we would have to have 12, why we would have to replace Judas, except that in Psalms, there there's a scripture and Peter pulls it out. And apparently in the Jewish, it was important to them. So I decided to do a little study on the number 12. And here's well, and the it, deal. And it could be that a piece of it was just, we started out with 12, we've lost one. And so let's put it back to our original compliment. So I'm not big on numerology. I'll just lay that on the table now. I know there's people that they look for the hidden meaning of the number three, perfection. The number seven is God's number, seven days. I just remember Saturday morning cartoons with one is a perfect number. Okay, so numbers are have meaning and different things. And and so I like to look if there's one that seems to catch my attention or that there's significance, but I'm not going to build a whole theology or a whole teaching around in today's episode, the number 12, 12, three times four, 10 plus two, it's 12, but we need 12 disciples. And so when I started looking and studying and it was like, what? I found out that the number 12 appears 187 times in scripture and it is in Genesis and it's in revolution, revolution, revelation. That's easy for you to say. And in between. And so it tends to be a completion and government. So the disciples become our apostles. They're the government of the first, the early church, the start. But when you go clear back, we have the 12 tribes of Israel. And why do we have the 12 tribes of Israel? Because that's how many God said there was. Exactly. He determined. So um, Jacob had 12 sons. When they grew up, they divided the land into plots for each of the 12. But 12 even goes a little bit beyond that because not every one of the 12 sons became a tribe. Because you get Manasseh and Ephraim, who were the sons of Joseph. And so there isn't a tribe of Joseph, there's a tribe of Ephraim. And one of his brothers never became a tribe, they became Ephraim and Manasseh. One of them disappeared, so one of them, instead of Joseph, the tribe of Joseph, you have that. So 12 obviously had some significance because God worked to create 12 tribes, yeah. even though it wasn't the simplest, exact obvious thing. Exact sons. Yeah. And then there's 12 minor prophets. And in Revelation, 12 is everywhere in the New Jerusalem. And I do not do a lot with eschatology, which is the big word for end times because I just think it's going to happen and I just make sure that I'm following Jesus. And so, but if you're one of those people that studies that, go look at the new Jerusalem and you'll find the number 12 all over that. Um, A lot of the 12s, like there's 12 stones that go into an altar, um, the 12 spies that went into Canaan, and you'll have to go look all this up because we would be like 10 years of podcasting (laughs) if I actually explained all this. But I promise you it's all there. But a lot of that ties back to the 12 tribes. Yes. So even though there's 187 12s in the Bible, some of them are kind of the same 12 refigured. But 
I thought that was fun and interesting. So I looked at the number 12 for you. So they, they're going to put their 12th person in. Peter stands up. He quotes Psalms. He's like, may his place be deserted. Let there be no evil to dwell, no one to dwell in it. No evil, no one to dwell in it. And may another take his place of leadership. So we're, we're going to find a leader. How are we going to find a leader? Well, first off, <coughs> raise your arm. Did your mom make you do that? Okay. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Um, hairball. Uh, so first off, one of the things they look at is, well, who, who should we even consider to fill this place? And so they list, Peter lists off a couple of things. And one of them is it should be somebody that's been with us since the beginning. Makes because sense. if you're going to be a witness and spread the news about Jesus and talk about him, you probably ought to be somebody that was around and saw what he did and heard what he said. Which is another thing. You know, we see Jesus and his little 12. Do, 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 do. They move the little uh -huh. 12. And then there's a big crowd and Jesus preaches to the big crowd, but he's got his little 12. And then he's down at the sea and he's got his 12. And he goes out in the boat with his 12. But apparently there were more than the 12 that moved like, with him. Yeah, in because, reality, there, were, there, were, yeah. there was a crowd of people that went with him most of the time that followed him around. They weren't the original 12 yeah. that he chose, but they follow him they around. And you, on. you see, if you read through the Gospels, that different ones are, are there yeah. in different places and different things. And so we've got, We've got all of that following around and maybe they didn't follow him absolutely everywhere, but anytime he was in their neighborhood, they were where he was. But they wanted a witness to the resurrection. They wanted somebody from the baptism until he had resurrected and then gone back into heaven so that this person, I'm assuming they wanted them to know what they spoke. They wanted yeah. them to know Jesus because it's hard to preach, teach explain what you don't know yeah what you didn't see and so it was it was going to be one of us mm -hmm. us and no no they were letting others in but it was going to be one of us i love air quotes anyway so they nominated two men joseph and matthias and so now we've got two we've got a choice of two uh -huh. so what are we going to do we voting wasn't big in that time no nope. they were not a democracy mm-hmm -mm. They were an autocratic ruler. Yes. And the ruler just said. Israel operated mostly on a theocracy in Old Testament times, which is they God picked. They weren't theoc theocratic but that, here. That fades away once we yeah. get the kings with Saul and David and company. Yeah. So they decided to cast lots and not throwing lot around. Oh, that sounded like fun. <laughs> His what? wife is salt. Let's throw lot. No, he's dead. Anyway, so they're going to cast lots, which sounds like gambling. Uh huh. Because lots were little things. Yeah. So they're gambling. Uh huh. No. Not really. They're not. Uh uh. Because gambling is when you are not trusting God, you are doing something to win, improve your life. You're leaving it up to chance. Mm -hmm. God actually instituted casting lots. I know you don't know this, but in the Old Testament, in the book of Numbers, God had them casting lots for land divisions. Yes. So it was a thing that they've been doing forever. And it was a way of finding what God had predetermined. It wasn't, it wasn't a gamble. Yeah. It's a, it's a matter of the heart. Well, a thing that uh, it, it's a perspective change because what you have to recognize it now, our culture, um, here and in this time, you know, you, you, you say things like, Oh, good luck with that. Or, or things. And we have this idea that, that there is coincidences and random chance and mm -hmm. that things happen by accident. That is not a biblical concept. Um, the, Folks in the Bible and up to this, they they had a firm belief in the fact that everything that happens 
is subject to the will of God and that it happens because of his his choice and his determining, which um, is an interesting perspective to have. And so they felt, in particular, if you are purposefully saying, God, we're going to roll the dice and we want you to choose the final number. Yeah. And so they, you know, it wasn't a you know, chance. Yeah, they roll they roll so the would dice. they clearly hear God. Believing and assuming mm -hmm. that God is going to have that fall on the right place. Now some people today would say, "Well, that's just ridiculous." Well, it apparently wasn't. And no. that was their their perspective, that was their opinion, and Obviously, it must be their result because God said to do it this way. If you don't know what to do, cast lots and find out. Yeah. And that was a way of determining the will of God. Um, and they put their faith in it. And so, um, you know, we think of it as, well, why didn't they make a good choice? They, they just left it up to complete chance. Nope. Peter would say there is no such thing as chance. No, because this is this is the system that God has put in place for how we we make choices when we're not sure that we're hearing God. Yeah. So we do. Um, in the Old Testament, somebody did a fleece. Yes. You've maybe heard of, of fleeces where you say, okay, God, if this thing happens that could never, ever happen, you know, the chances mm -hmm. are so small. If this happens, then I'm going to know that this is what you were saying. And um, in this case, was it Jacob? Gideon. Gideon. It was Gideon. Yes. Gideon laid out a fleece. And what he said, when you say a fleece, well, what's a fleece? A fleece was a sheepskin. Yep. He laid out a sheepskin and he said, okay, God, if this is what you want to have happen, then I'm going to know that because you're going to make do land on the fleece and everything else is going to be dry. Yeah. And so he laid it out and in the morning when he got up and he went out and looked, that was what he found. And then he says, well, I, just, just, just to be sure. Just in case. How about I do it one more day? And if that's the case, we'll make all the ground covered with dew and let my fleece be dry. And they did that. And so, and God, God fulfilled that. I don't necessarily recommend that you require God to perform for you. Um, that may no. not always come out the way you want it to have happen. No, but don't. in the case of casting lots, that was their anticipation. And well, that you know, we can yeah. roll the dice and God can certainly control which side this thing lands on. Yeah. Cause God knows that we do not always hear correctly or or know for sure. And he has a lot of patience with our little humanity. Are you saying there are times when I don't know things? <laughs> <laughs> no, honey, never. Twice in a day. But anyway, um, so I just, the the whole lot casting is just a way of determining that now we have Matthias. Yes. And so because he obviously was the one that won if you didn't fill that in. So we have we have finished filling the 12. We have our 12 apostles now. Mm -hmm. Um I always feel a little bit concerned here though because I know those other 11 guys. I've I've I met them in Matthew uh -huh. and they followed me clear through. But now I've got this weird guy. But they knew him, so I'm going to trust They said he was there from the beginning. So he obviously was a trustworthy choice. He was there. Um, he just wasn't somebody whose name appears on lists because they list off the original 12 because those are the ones that, that Jesus chose. Can you name the 12? No. Me neither. I, I used to be able to. I just realized that's something that we should probably... There, be able to do. There was a time when I could list them off when I was studying those things, but... Uh, oh, the things we've forgotten. Oh, the things we've forgotten. All right. Well, that so, finishes chapter one. So, well, kind of. Oh. Because it does, but we still... 
I mean, the very last end of, of, of chapter one is it, it doesn't say it, but we went back to what was going on before they did all of this because they, Jesus said, wait, while they're waiting, they choose between, between Joseph and, and Matthias. Matthias. And they do all of that. So now we have Matthias. And so now when we... We're still waiting. When we end the book of, <laughs> of chapter one, they're still... We're still waiting. Yeah, they're, they're still waiting. We and they took, don't know what they're waiting for. We took care of the business. Yeah. So now we're, we're, all, we're all ready for to happen, whatever it is. And so they're just kind of waiting which is an interesting thing because it it means that uh, one of the common themes that you will find throughout scripture is the idea of faith and yes you know, without faith it is it is an impossible to please God um, that is kind of the apparently that is the currency of heaven mm -hmm. and so one of the things that you have in all of this is they don't know what they're waiting for. Nope. They don't know how long they're waiting. Nope. They don't know what it's going to look like when they see it. Nope. All they know is, is Jesus said, wait until the Holy Spirit comes. Well, what's that going to look like? Yeah, wait until the Holy Spirit comes. Well, how will we know when he's here? He'll be here. He'll be here. And apparently they would know. And uh, so until then, they're waiting. And, and, you know, in our lives, we've known when it was time to know something. Yeah. You just, you know, you know that you know. And, um, but waiting, it's hard. So they're still just waiting. And they were we don't know how impatient they were with any of that, but we know that they were there, they were waiting, and that's where we close out chapter one, is they're just hanging out, waiting for God to do this, whatever it is that God has planned. Oh, I hate when I'm waiting for whatever it is. I know. That's a rough spot. It's not, it's not interesting, but, but, here we are. And so we're going to wrap up and move into uh, chapter two next. And so, um, Father, we just thank you for the things that you do in the waiting, the preparations that you make and, and the things that you set into motion and the faith that you instill in us. And so today for people who are in the waiting, that are not sure what's coming next. They're not sure what it's going to look like. Maybe they have a promise, but they don't know what that promise is going to look like and they're afraid they're going to miss it. Today, just give them the, the faith and the reassurance that they can't miss it. Nothing is left to chance with you. You plan it all and you know it all. And when the time is right, you will show the way. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, until next time. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're interested in checking out more of our podcasts as they come available, please download our app in your device's app store or check us out on your podcast platform at Garden Valley Church. We look forward to seeing you next time.